let's consider a problem and see how does it differ in the case of having a block on some sort of bed being held up by wheels. So for example, if this were say a truck bed and we had some sort of cargo in the back, would it be the case that one of the wheels is providing a larger force holding up that block than the other? So for example, we could imagine that the first wheel here, it's going to be providing some sort of upward force holding up the bed and weight here. This wheel would do the same. And your first guess would be that, oh, perhaps both of them are providing the same force ultimately. But you could imagine that, well, if I were to take the block here and move it directly over this wheel, you might think that, that oh, this wheel might hold up all the weight and this wheel might hold up very little, maybe none at all. And the same sort of thing would happen if you were carrying a load, that you would want the load to be centered between the two uh, things holding it up, otherwise one would be having to hold up greater than the other. So we need a way to describe why this is the case. And we can do this in the cases of torque. So for a system like this, if we're actually holding up, there are two conditions. That the sum of forces on a body should sum up to zero and also the sum of torques should sum up to zero. So ultimately these two wheels are providing an upward force and it's going to hold up the downward force of the weight of this block. We'll suppose the bed has no mass to consider just to make this problem simple. So instead of this thing being centered it's going to be closer to one wheel than the other. So Let's say that the block is 0 0.5 meters away from that wheel base, and the wheels are separated by 2 meters. So in this setup, if the two forces involved here, pointing upward, were of the same magnitude, and each of them had a force of half the weight, then the sum of forces would work out, but sum of torques maybe not necessarily. So to do this problem, we need to consider then, okay, torque we know is going to be related to the magnitude of the force, but also the size of the lever arm. Usually you would measure from the pivot point, but here this isn't like a um, teeter-totter where there's an obvious fulcrum point. The interesting thing though is, we can actually be arbitrary in our choice of pivot point, but we probably want to choose it in such a spot to make things easy. So with this case we have three different forces when we include the weight of that block, the two upward forces due to the wheels, and then the downward force, the weight of that block. So two of these are unknown, so if I just use some of the forces, I'm not going to get very far because there are two unknowns. I might also think, well, um, with torque, I might have two unknowns. But here's an interesting thing I could do. Let's suppose I make this wheelbase right here, this point, the fulcrum point, my pivot point. So I have this nice advantage then that because I know from our definition that torque is force times lever arm length, sine theta, where theta is the angle between the lever arm and the applied force. If I'm applying, if I'm making this point right here my pivot point, no matter what the force is, the size of my lever arm is zero. So if we say this is force one, this is force two, I know the torque from one is going to be whatever force one is times zero. So this is going to make it quite easy. So now if I do the sum of torques, I'm only going to have two non-zero torques. There's going to be the torque from wheel two, and then there's going to be the torque due to the weight. Those two torques are in opposite directions, and if this is balanced, they sum up to zero. So just by choosing a fulcrum point right here, I now can set up my sum of torques equation 
which has these two terms in it, but one of them I know because I know the force applied, the weight of the object, and I will know the lever arm length. So now this will be doable. So let's work out the math and see what we get for the torque in the first case. So with these two torques, I have first the force of the second wheel, and the lever arm length is just the distance between the first wheel and the second, since that's my distance from my pivot point to here. So this is going to be 2 meters. And then I have the force of just the weight of that mass, and then how far it is away from the pivot point. In this case, 0 0.5 meters. And in both cases, the force and the lever arm are perpendicular to each other. So that way, um, we're just taking sine of 90 degrees, which is 1, so this is all nice and straightforward. This sums up to 0, because again, these two torques need to add up to 0, so that way there's no um, angular acceleration where we're in a uh, stable situation. So I can just solve for F2, just a little bit of algebra then, mg... 0 0.5 divided by 2, and I said for this case the mass was 100 kilograms, so this works out to exactly 25 g, which is going to be around 250 newtons. So I know how much the first wheel is applying, approximately, put in the exact numbers if we want, Let's see if that differs from force two, or the force from the first wheelbase. So I could do this in two different ways. I could use some of the forces, or I could use some of the torques again, but choose a different pivot point. We'll do it both ways to see if we get the same results. If we do some of the forces, we have just three different forces. We have that F1 and F2 are both upward. The weight is downward. And again, the sum of the forces should go to zero to make sure we're nice and stable. So solving for F1 is nice and easy. It's just going to be mg minus F2. And if I just use the numbers I had before, so this is going to be 100g minus 25g. That is 75g, very close to 750 newtons. And that force is considerably larger than it was for the other wheel. So indeed, it kind of fits our intuition that the mass being closer to one of the wheel bases means one of those wheels has to apply a larger force. To see if we get the same result, we'll do the sum of torques again, but this time Let's make it so our pivot point is the front wheel here. So we said before this is wheel 2 and the other is wheel 1. So that's our pivot point. So with this sort of setup we're going to have the weight is actually going to be producing a counterclockwise motion around our pivot point of choice. So usually with our notation this will be a positive torque. So this will be torque from the weight and the torque from wheel 1 is in the opposite direction. That equals 0. So with this we know again what our weights are. And our, our, I'm sorry, what our torque should be. So we have mg, the force from the weight. And in this case our lever arm length is the distance from the front wheel to the weight which is going to be 2 meters minus half a meter, that is 1.5 meters. And then we have force 1, and then how far away that is. And again, the wheelbase is 2 meters apart. And so we find that force 1 is going to then just be mg 1.5 divided by 2. And that will, again, end up giving us 75g, or about 700 50 newtons. So, two different ways of using the torque equation just by choosing a different pivot point and being consistent and we can get the same results both ways.